Well, hi there, stamping friends. It's Tracy Rather from Plum Crazy Stamping. So glad that you're here with me tonight. Uh, Facebook Live. And let's see. Today is um, April 14th. No, 13th. 13th, sorry. Don't want to be a day ahead for those of you that are working on your taxes. Oh my, <laughs> that's coming up. I have that to finish this week. So, um, let's see what's new. Hi, Kathy. Uh, just a reminder to those of you that have been on before, please sign in so I know who's here. If you've not been here before and you are watching this on the replay, please um, put your name in the comments and where you're from. Hi, Donna. Nice to see you. Um, let's see what else is going on. Um, I have to tell you, I just got uh, the Stampin' Up! box um, on my porch yesterday for um, many, many new products out of the new catalog. You are going to love them. I can't wait to share them with you. Here, here's it. Well, once I put the camera down, I'll give you a sneak peek of the new colors. They are absolutely gorgeous. Pretty soon we'll start playing with these. Let me just get them laid out here and you'll be able to see them. Um, let's see. So that's coming up May 3rd is when it will be, um, the new catalog will be available for you to um, order from. I am in the process of sending out catalogs right now. So if you are interested in a catalog, please email me at tracy at plumcrazystamping.com and let me know that you would like a catalog. And I need from you your mailing address to be able to mail it to you and your phone number so that I'll be able to follow up with you and make sure that you've gotten the catalog. I am, as I said, I'm actually working on that mailing this week so that they will be out. My hope is that you will have them in your hands um, when we're able to order on May 3rd. So um, don't hesitate. Let me know. If you have ordered from me in the last six months, you will automatically get a catalog from me. And uh, I will be doing that complimentary and it will not cost you for the catalog. So... Let's see, let me go ahead and I'm going to flip the camera down and we'll take a peek at our new in colors and then we will go ahead and um, start our card tonight. So, here we go. And I just need to get my computer screen fired up again here. Okay. So I saw that Kathy and um, Donna, we're on. Oh boy, why does it go to a totally different thing? It'll take me just a minute, but wanted to show you the new colors here while I'm waiting for my computer to fire up. Anyway, way over on the right here, we have Parakeet Party, Sweet Sorbet, Tahitian Tide, Orchid Oasis, and Starry Sky. And um, I don't know about you, but they are really, really growing on me. It's kind of crazy. Um, I really liked Lemon Lime Twist when we had that one. So that is a lot like Lemon Lime Twist. Um, I'm not sure this looks like kind of maybe something we had called Watermelon. Um, it'll be nearby. But these shades of purple and a darker blue and a lighter blue, I think go so well together. I am just excited. So, more to come. I'll be playing with these in the very near future. So, can't wait to share them with you. Okay, so let's see here. I am still trying to get this to do what it's supposed to do, and it doesn't want to do it. Well, there we go. Okay, so let's go ahead, and here's the card we're going to do tonight. So, it is... Um, from the free um, Otterly, no, Awesome Otters. So this was one of the freebies um, from, 
oh gosh, I can't, celebration, uh, just this past um, January, February. And this little guy is so cute. Now this card, my friend Jean Wenninger designed, and I want to show you, I had done another card probably a mm, couple months ago, maybe, using these guys as well. And they're so cute. And then the paper is actually also something that we got at um, Celebration. So I don't know if you have this, but if you do, this is a wonderful use for it because there's all these colors in here. Let me just try to slide the plastic down a little bit. And one side looks like water and the other side looks like marble in another shade. Anyway, there's all kinds of colors and um, paper in here. So if you have this paper, I encourage you to get it out and use it. I am trying to do a better job of using more of my paper rather than just always saving it. But anyway, so that's the DSP we're using, the stamp set we're using. This is Bermuda Bay. And so um, the measurements of this, now remember, I will be putting the full tutorial for this card in my weekly um, email next week. So if you're not on my mailing list, you'll want to get signed up. And if you um, are, that's where the tutorial will be. Uh, this is a regular half of an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock, but it's cut the uh, long way versus in half the, the shorter way. So it's four and a quarter by 11 inches, and then it's scored at five and a half inches, and that gives us our card base. And then we're actually going to take two cuts off it to be able to use to make the pieces that we want to put together here. So um, I've actually taken this and the instructions are that you cut one. So both of the pieces we're going to cut off are going to be four and a quarter this way, right? And we're going to have um, two different pieces that get cut off of here. One is going to be four and a quarter by one and three quarters, and one is going to be four and a quarter by two inches. And then it leaves you with the end here. And I think these two ends, so the smaller one and three quarters match, and then the thicker one that was cut at two inches wide is the one that goes across, so you have enough room um, for the image to be on that, okay? So that's kind of the structure in the um, Bermuda Bay. Then we're going to do a card layer uh, before we um, actually put the designer series paper on. So then those are cut uh, just a wee bit smaller. So on this one we have the um, four and an eighth by one and seven eighths, and that's going to fit like that and I'm going to go ahead and use my glue just to glue that down and then this smaller one is going to be four and an eighth by one and seven eighths now I said that backwards didn't I this is the one and five eighths I'm sorry so just an eighth difference um, from the Bermuda Bay card base Now, I'm still kind of focusing on birthday cards for kids right now. I don't know about you, but I seem to have a lot of them right in the spring months. So trying to get ahead of the game here before I have to get them all in the mail. So that's that one. And then the one that's a little thinner that's going to go on the bottom of the card. I'm just going to glue that together. Okay, and just have that very thin border. And I really think adding this extra layer does help the designer series paper now when I put it on here to pop. You know, if I had it on this, I mean, that looks nice. So you can just do that if you choose to. But with the white, 
underneath it, then the waves, you know, in this paper come out a little bit better. So I do like the way that uh, Jean did that. I want to make sure I keep the waves and not the marble <laughs> towards the front so that our otter actually looks like he's swimming on his back and not sitting on a counter, right? <laughs> okay, so we'll get this one just slid on and I'm using the glue again. It makes it so much easier than a tape runner because I can slide it, especially when these borders are so small. Okay. And let's do the bigger piece here. So I was able to take all of the designer series paper that I needed for um, this card. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to use with the little extra piece. But it was one six by six uh, piece of designer series paper. So most of the time our designer series paper comes in 12 by 12 or six by six. And we actually have one right now that is four by six. So just trying a, something a little bit different. But um, nice to know that you can get this all out of one piece of paper. All right, so this is our side one yet. Now we're going to have um, the card insert here, which is going to have our greeting on it. I'm not going to glue that down until I'm actually able to stamp on it. So we'll be doing our stamping here shortly before we put everything together. And I just have a white scrap uh, piece of paper to do my stamping on. So let me just close my glue for right now. And we'll go ahead and stamp up um, our otter and the hat that goes together. And I'm using the Tuxedo um, Memento. I'm sorry, Memento Tuxedo Black. <laughs> I knew I'd get it eventually. Now this is the one that works well with Stampin' Blends because I am going to color the otter and the um, the hat, uh, birthday hat, with my Stampin' Blend markers. And those are the alcohol markers. So let's just get him stamped right here. And this set does not have any dies with it. So this little guy needs to get fussy cut um, so that he, um, I'm going to get an extra piece of paper I have out here, just some scrap. So we'll just have to cut him out. And then the birthday hat here. Okay. And that will also need to get fussy cut. Oh, I don't like, I missed it. It's not dark enough on that one corner. Let me just redo that. There, much better. All right. So that's all I'm going to do with the tuxedo black, because those are the only things that are going to be colored. So I'm going to set that there. And let's... Um, to save time, I already did fussy cut out the um, otter that we need. Let me just fussy cut out the hat here. So if you have not fussy cut something, that is just cutting out whatever your image is as close um, to the border of it, but leave just a little bit of white around the edge so you don't cut the black. And the other part just kind of, you don't really see. And when you're fussy cutting, you turn the paper and the image and leave your scissors kind of in place. And um, it just makes it easier to manage um, the cutting that you're doing and less likely to cut something that you don't want to cut. And I'll tell you though, this hat right at the peak is a little tough. But there we go. So we've got our hat. Okay. Then um, we'll go ahead and let's uh, color those quick before we do our final stamping. And whenever you use the alcohol markers, know that they have a tendency to bleed through your cardstock. So you'll always want to have them on something so that they don't bleed through. And if they're already on your cardstock, you may want to color them before you attach them to your card so you don't have it bleeding through on the other side. 
Now, um, the Stampin' Blends are sold in a pair, a dark and a light of the same color so that you can do shading. Today's image, I'm not going to worry about shading. Um, I don't think I need to do it. Um, but I still am going to use my Stampin' Blends because they have such a, a great outcome as far as being very smooth. And then to do his nose, I'm just using my Stampin' Right marker, a regular marker. And I'm just going to do that in black because I do not have... Obviously, black doesn't have different shades, so we don't have that in a Stampin' Blend. Okay, then I'm going to use the... Uh, light soft suede for his body and I just kind of go near the line but try not to go over the line and just in circular motions over the area that you want to keep dark if I um, go back and forth straight like that if there's something that looks like a streak then I will um, color it in with a circular motion because this will blend together so it won't look like you have the marks of a marker. It will look just solid. And that's what makes these look so good when they're on your cards. And I'm using the nib because this guy doesn't have a lot of room. If I were doing a big flower, I would use the brush tip of this Stampin' Blend marker. And I would also be um, doing a lot of shading. But I'm just going for great color on him right now. And making sure I stay inside the black line because you don't want it to bleed. And if you do keep your marker down a long time or go over, it can bleed. And then we have something called a uh, the highlighter marker, which you can actually get some of that alcohol to evaporate and you know, the mistake that went over the line actually go away, so. All right, we almost have him here. Even the little ears. I'm going to go around his eyes. Just leave them the way that they are. Go around his own nose. So now even as he dries a little more, you'll notice that it will be just a solid um, color, which is so nice. And then I'm going to take my, um, this one is light crumb cake, and that's how I'm going to do his belly. Just little circular motions staying inside, um, you know, from the dark, so I can create a contrast. And now they have the, um, oh, what do they call it, the Nature Together set of 10 different shades of brown, which can be used for skin tones and um, all of that when you're coloring people, which is really nice. But also, I don't know about you, but with all the different animal stamps we have, all those different shades of brown will be so nice um, to use with them. I know when I... We got the donkey stamp about a year ago. I um, like blew out my smoky slate, I think. I no longer had that as a choice because I had uh, used it so much. All right, so now I'm going to color the birthday hat with the first the dark uh, Bermuda Bay. And I'm just going to do that on the, the polka dots on the hat. And then I'm going to do that on the head of the fish that... Uh, our little otter is holding. And I'm gonna leave this hat white to just find the contrast with the waves on our uh, paper. Okay, so we've got that and let's just do the head of the fish here. And I'm going to use the light one. And if, can you hear these markers when I'm open, opening and closing them? It's really important to close these markers really well because they're alcohol and that evaporates. 
so you don't want to leave your markers open. And I close them right away. And if I were doing shading, I would close one and then, you know, quickly use the other marker to do the shading if I needed to, okay? So, all right, we've got our hat and our otter cut out. So now let's do the stamping that we want to do in our uh, Bermuda Bay. So this one, I just like to try to set it up the way that these um, panels are going to fit so that I'm doing it in the right place. So I'm not gluing down the white card insert because I want to make sure I stamp it straight. And if I don't, I have the other side of the cardstock to use. So I'm just holding it in place. And then the skinny one I line up on the bottom because I'm going to show you how I adhere those together. And then this one is going to be just over a little bit and measured there. And then I'm going to let this pop up and just put it back down here. So I've got the area where I want to stamp defined. You know, this is the square, right? I'm trying to keep things straight because it helps when I actually try to do the um, stamping that I want to do. So I'm doing uh, You Are Utterly Awesome. Just making sure. Yep, I thought I caught the corner of that. Some of the cling stamps, especially, you need to be extra careful that you're not getting ink on the sides of what you're doing. Okay. So let's try that again. This pad is pretty juicy, so I don't need to press very hard. And then I'm just going to line this up in the center. And there, I think I did just fine. If you didn't like it or you made a mistake, you could flip over that piece of cardstock or you could make a label that you could put in place, um, you know, to actually make it straight when you glue it down. And then on the bottom panel here, I'm going to put happy birthday. No, it's birthday time. And both of these sentiments are from the Awesome Otter set, so I didn't have to use another set. If you wanted to do a different font or, you know, a bigger happy birthday, you, sh you um, surely could do that. Um, but I'm just trying to keep it simple so that you're only having to pull out one stamp set. Okay, so we've got our It's Birthday time. I just stamp off before I put the ink in my chamois to wash the stamps. All right, let's shut this so we don't drop anything in our ink. And let's go ahead and put our card together. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, just glue in the uh, inside of the card. Okay. And if you can eyeball up three of the size, the fourth side is usually just fine when you are putting in the card insert. All right. And then let me just make sure again that this is very well creased so it stays down. And then we're going to um, line up the bottom of this. And we're going to have to line up. And then you place this on there so that your glue is only going to be on the, the bottom piece. And the top piece, and the one that you don't want to move, you know, is this bottom one. So I'm going to set this over this way to help myself. And you can actually line it up with the grid lines, too. So I'm like three lines down from there and three lines up from here. And if you wanted to temporarily tape this down with washi tape, you could. If that would help you have it stay in place. 
but it usually does pretty good. And then you can see where you have area to put glue here and glue there, but obviously not in the middle. If you're worried about it, you can use your silicone sheet and lay that inside too. But I've got it all lined up here. I don't want to necessarily move it all. So I'm just going to go with this. Put a little glue there. Do the same amount down here. Okay. And then flip it over. Double check that I've still got the bottom lined up with the card. Sometimes you wish you just had one more finger, I think, to, to do this. But once again, because it's the glue, I can always slide it if I need to. And then the test is looking underneath here. Oh, you know what? I did get a little glue in there. Now I can take that off with an adhesive eraser when it dries. And I usually keep some uh, baby wipes nearby here when I get glue on my hands. So that always helps. Otherwise you keep working on things and the uh, <laughs> glue gets on other parts of your card. Let me just wipe that off. And as I said, when that dries, I will um, use the eraser. Okay, now we're just going to use dimensionals to pop our little otter up and his birthday hat. And I'm going to actually use the regular dimensionals for the otter and I'm going to use the mini dimensionals for the hat. I like that we have two sizes. You know what? Now I know where this extra piece is supposed to go. <laughs> I was going to add it to the envelope, but guess what? That needs to go behind there. So we'll find that after the fact. So this one has a unique design and only has DSP in two places. Unless I can still get this off. Nope, I'm not going to do it. So I'm going to leave it like it is. I thought I had an extra one, so if you did have an extra piece, this is what I was going to do to the envelope, is just add it on uh, for a little decoration. But not today. When you have another piece and you can't remember why, check it out again. <laughs> I went over that this afternoon, and there we go. I didn't do it. Well, And remember, there's never anything that's wrong. It's art, right? So this is my design of this card that I changed from Jean's design. So that's what we call casing. You copy and stamp everything, copy and steal everything, whatever, something like that. But you change it up a little bit. So I have changed this up. It is not exact, but it's still beautiful. How's that for covering it, right? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, we got our little guy here with his hat on. And there we go. And this guy is going to have, I'm actually going to put this on the envelope with a little glue. And I'm going to have an extra special envelope to put in the mail. Okay. There, I really think that that looks nice and adds a little pop to that, right? So let's get these things set to the side. And one of the things, oh yeah, let's do a little, another thing I was going to add that wasn't on the uh, example card is I'm going to take a little wink of Stella. Oh boy, where did the brush part go for this one? There we go. You're getting to see all kinds of things. So this is uh, Wink Estella. It's just some glue that has glitter in it. And um, just makes another area um, that pops a little bit and doesn't uh, look like everything else. So little Wink Estella on his 
um, hat, like a little cotton ball. All right, so we've got our um, otters, right? So let me show you. So like I said, I'm making birthday cards for kids. This um, fun fold is really pretty easy. So how about using some of the other animal stamps that we have? So let me see if I put this one. Let's put these over this way. Okay. There. So I was thinking nuts about squirrels. You could put this little squirrel in the same place, you know, where the otter is. So you could do that. And there is, not only could you do, hope you're feeling bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, then you could put nuts about you right up here. Um, and they have happy birthday in this set too. Um, the happy hedgehogs. Now this has a punch, so you can actually punch the hedgehog out. And uh, you would be able to... Um, do any of these little things, even put the little mushroom here and put, um, it's so nice of you to be so nice, um, would be really cute. And then you all know, I love the birthday chicks. Um, so you could take these little chickens and put them here. You could have a chicken, you know, just peeking out over this section. This would be really fun to use this fun fold. We also, in celebration, got the counting sheep set. So, and this one, these sheep have a little birthday hat too, so they would be just like the otters. And then, with Mother's Day coming, I thought, you know, what a perfect thing to put this parfum bottle right where the otter is. And then there's the Happy Mother's Day that could go down here. And I think it would be really pretty. And you could put, um, you know, any of these sayings in right inside the card and it would be actually covered up you know under the top of this right here you could put a saying and then you could actually put the flowers as accents too and make your own background with the flowers and you won't even need designer series paper so um just a couple of ideas to use this fun fold so with that, let me see if um, I can see any of your comments or questions that you have. And Michelle, hello from Northwest Ohio. I'm Kathy. I'm glad you like the decorated envelope. I'm glad that it works, Sherry. Uh, it looks okay without the top piece. Thank you. Thank you. We will make a lemonade out of lemons. <laughs> now, those are the only comments I can see right now. So I will um, take a peek at them after I'm off camera. And um, if there's any questions, I'll get back to you. So remember, if you're watching this on the replay too, I'd like your comments and any questions you may have. And then let me go ahead and flip this back up and just say thanks uh, so much for joining me tonight. It always goes so quickly and I enjoy the time we spent together. I hope you have some stamping inspiration, a new fun fold that you can use in many ways, and uh, don't hesitate to post a picture in the comments section of any card that you would use using this uh, fun fold. I would love to see it and I'm sure the other stamping friends would like to see it as well. So take care, have a great evening, and I'll see you again next Wednesday at 6, 6 o'clock for uh, Facebook Live. Take care, friends. Happy stamping. Bye-bye.